Welcome back to the Movie Man. Today I will show you a 2014 adventure, fantasy, film, Noah. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. At the beginning of creation, the creator created Adam and Eve in his image to become the first humans. At the same time, the creator gave them two choices, obeying the temptation of darkness or grasping the blessing of light. Unexpectedly. The two of them stole the forbidden fruit of the Garden of Eden because of greed and thus lost their innocence, so the Creator took back all the gifts of the earth in a fit of anger. Thus, the descendants of Adam and Eve suffered from barrenness, and since then, the world has had no more rain, and all things have begun to dry up. Good angels do not want to see humanity suffer from barrenness, so against the will of the Creator. A golden light like a meteor shower landed on earth and thus angered the creator. So they were punished by having their flame-like light extinguished by the rocks and mud of the earth, thus turning into ugly and bulky megalithic men. Even so, they passed on all their knowledge to humankind. With the help of the megaliths, humankind rose again from the dust and created a great industrial civilization until the descendants of Adam. In the tenth generation, they became less innocent their selfishness and greed sowed crimes in every foot of the city. Brothers killed each other, everything in the world was destroyed, they turned the bounty of the stone man into atrocities, and only a few people still inherited the innocence and goodness of the creation. Noah's grandfather Methuselah is one of them, only to see him holding the flaming sword and then heavily inserted into the location and igniting a blazing fire to destroy the evil humans. Save the stone people. While the stone people who survived the war continued to be trapped in stone shells forever banished to the barren land and can only quietly wait for the creator's forgiveness so that they can be called back to the heavenly realm. The son of Methuselah, on this day, was teaching Noah he wanted Noah to inherit the will of the creator, to remain innocent and good, and to continue to guard the only land that was not occupied by warlords. However, before the words were spoken the brutal warlords came here in this era of scarce resources. Naturally, they would not let go of this fertile land, for it was rich in resources that they needed. To take this land, they did whatever they could to kill Noah's father, and Noah, who was hiding in the shadows, had no choice but to panic and flee. Twenty years later Noah has raised three children in a deserted place. One day he was teaching the children how to collect herbs when a drop of water suddenly fell from the clear sky. Noah realized that something was wrong and immediately took his son home. And on the way back, a rare hunting dog was seriously injured on his side. In the barren land, visible animals have long been mutated and soon the severely wounded hound stopped breathing in Noah's arms. Then several savage nomadic tribes surrounded him and he asked Noah to hand over the hound to keep them safe. However, they underestimated the battle-hardened man in front of them, and Noah easily put them down with his strength and then carried the hound's body home for cremation. At night, Noah had a strange nightmare. He was standing under a mountain that was the only one with plants, but all the ground was reduced to a black scorched earth and the world under his feet was stained red with blood. Noah suddenly woke up convinced that his grandfather Methuselah was living in the mountain in front of him, and then again saw a drop of water fall on the scorched earth and grow a flower. Noah was awakened from his sleep by a nightmare, sweating profusely, and by now, he understood that the Creator hated humankind and wanted to destroy the whole world by a natural disaster. So in the early morning, the family packed their bags and prepared to go to the mountain in their dream to find their grandfather Methuselah to seek the truth the world had already been destroyed by the warlords. The once green forest is now dull, and the cities ruled by the warlords are places they would never dare to go. On the way, they passed an abandoned mine, and when they went to check it out, they found traces of people living there. Unfortunately. All the people here seem to have been killed by those brutal military laws after a closer look at the ground, and found a dying little girl. But the tragedy was that her abdomen was cut with a huge wound, and if she were not helped to stop the bleeding in time, the little girl would soon die. However, when his wife used herbs to clean the wounds, the people who killed them came back, and Noah's family had no choice but to take the little girl and flee in a hurry. But the scorched earth in front of them but let them look at the way, this is the human never dare to step into the realm see, 
The pursuit is close Noah decided to take the family and risk breaking into this scorched earth. The enemy that came after them stopped at the edge of the scorched earth, and after a brief reflection, there were still some people who were not afraid of death to chase them. Noah asked his son to protect his family and leave the rest of the first while he stayed behind to buy time for them to escape, but just as the two sides were at war, the enemy looked up in surprise, not daring to take a step forward. The bewildered Noah looked back and found a megalithic man standing beside him, followed by a heavy punch that knocked him unconscious only to wake up and see the family imprisoned by the megalithic man in the mine. They had defied the creator to come to earth to help the angels of humankind, but mankind had returned the favor by killing them all. Noah hurriedly explained to the megaliths that he was a descendant of Methuselah because his grandfather had saved the megaliths in a war, and the megaliths did not know if what Noah said was true and did not dare to hurt them, so they had to let them stay in the pit to fend for themselves. As night falls, a megalithic man sneaks up on Noah and rescues his family because he is convinced that Noah is the descendant of Methuselah. The megalithic man escorted them out of the land and then to the mountain in Noah's dream. According to the hint, his grandfather Methuselah lived on this mountain and relaxed. In the evening, they set up a tent and let the megalith stay at the bottom of the mountain to help look after his family while he took his eldest son to the mountain to look for his grandfather. At their first meeting, Methuselah was not surprised. After a few pleasantries, he cast a spell to put his great-grandson to sleep because the next topic he was going to discuss with Noah was not suitable for children to be present. Noah told his grandfather about the foretold disaster in his dream that the Creator was about to destroy the entire world and prompted him to come here to seek Methuselah's final instructions in his goal. Methuselah did not explain it to him but handed Noah a cup of tea, and after the cup of tea, Noah fell into the dream again. A seed in the cup of tea floated up in the water and then turned into a huge ark floating on the water's surface. All living things in the world were called to board the ark, except for human beings, who would be flooded and eventually become extinct. Noah woke up from his dream and realized that the Creator had done this to separate good from evil in the world. Evil will sink, good will rise and the flood will overthrow everything and re-establish a new order. Before leaving, Methuselah gave Noah seed, which he buried in the scorched earth after returning to camp that night. When he woke up the next day, the stone man who had helped Noah's family was taken away by other stone men on the charge of being a traitor. When they left, Noah called out to stop all the giant people, and he said he received the will of the Creator and gave him the task. He hoped that the huge people could stay to help him build the Ark and saw, thus saving all species on earth. But the megaliths no longer believe and humans decisively rejected him, and just then, the arid land suddenly gushed out a large amount of spring water flowing on the ground, forming a stream that kept spreading outward. When the spring came to life, just under the feet of the scorched earth immediately grew a lush forest. Monolithic people were shocked by the scene before them. With this forest, Noah can use these wood materials to build the ark, so the stone man believing that Noah did not deceive him, decides to stay to help Noah build the ark together and the next big escape plan for all the animals is about to come. Many reptiles were suddenly summoned to come out of the forest, and they crawled in an orderly manner to the shelter that had not yet been built which was the legendary Noah's Ark and saw. Because, in three days, a cataclysmic flood would devour all living things on earth. To preserve all species on earth, Noah and the megaliths worked overnight to build it. With the help of the megaliths, the Ark was quickly formed. Immediately afterward, a second group of flying animals arrived from the sky, but only two of each species were allowed to board the Ark and saw. They circled back and forth over the Ark dozens of times and then flew into the Ark's interior in an orderly manner. Once inside, they each found a good place to land. Immediately afterward, a third group of huge mammals were summoned and arrived. Again, only one male and one female of each species were allowed to board the Ark and saw. To save food, the Noah family developed an herb that put all the animals to sleep and would not be awakened until the disaster was over. Meanwhile, the work of building the ark still needed to continue. While everyone was putting their energy into building the ark, 
the brutal warlords arrived with a large group of refugees. They did not believe that the creator would send an apocalypse to destroy the world and told Noah to vacate the forest or demolish the ark behind him. Although many people were on the other side, Noah was undaunted and did not give in, because he firmly believed that the creator had sent this apocalyptic disaster to destroy humankind and remove all evil from the world. If this was the case, the tyrant had to take the ark and confront the creator. As he was calling for the army behind him, Noah's command, the giant stone man behind him suddenly stood up, revealing his huge body shape. When everyone saw this scene, they didn't dare to take a step forward. Before leaving, the tyrant could only give Noah a harsh word. Before the flood comes, he will lead his army to go and flatten the whole forest. Back at the camp, they spent their days and nights building weapons preparing to wage war against Noah, and forcing all the refugees to join the fight against the boulders. At night, Noah sneaks into their camp to snoop around. He didn't come here to see if the tyrant would wage war on them but to see if any good people were left and the world worth saving. But as a result, all he saw was human greed and selfishness. In the world's chaos, they burned, killed, and plundered village after village. Humans were killing each other everywhere and the earth beneath his feet was as red with blood as the fable in his dream. This convinced him even more of the creator's true purpose of sending the natural disaster to destroy humankind. Noah quickly returned to the forest and ordered everyone to speed up. The ark is built in a day, but before the warlord arrives, there is some conflict within the family. His eldest son and the girl he once saved eat the forbidden fruit in the jungle. The girl's childhood injury has stopped her ability to reproduce forever and has left the two lovers in love with each other incredibly frustrated. The playful scene was just seen by the youngest son. Seeing that everyone is paired up, but he does not have a girl to date makes his heart feel very painful and unfair. So he approached his father hoping to find a wife for him before the flood, but the result was his father's heartless refusal. Like and subscribe may look simple for you, but for us, it's precious. Please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon for the latest notifications. Thank you for being so supportive. Because he knew very well that the creator sent down the natural disaster to destroy all human beings, including their family. After being rejected, he also planted the seeds of hatred for his father, and after completing the task of building the ark, the family sent their elders to their deaths one by one, until the death of his last son. This ending made his wife feel very unfair even though they were so kind, they did not receive a little mercy and forgiveness from the creator. The next day, he secretly comes alone to the mountain to look for the immortal Methuselah she hopes that Methuselah can help their son to continue the incense. And Methuselah said he had no right to interfere with the creator's decision, and even if he intervened in the matter, the creator would eventually end it all in other ways. In the meantime, the youngest son was rejected by his father and ran alone to a nearby village that was being looted. Because of an accident, he, unfortunately, fell into a pile of dead people, where he found a little girl. After he said he did not mean any harm, he gave her the only food left in the bag and promised the little girl to help him escape. At that moment, the sky was suddenly filled with dark clouds, and a rainstorm was about to come. Noah already understood that disaster was coming, so he told the girl to go to the forest urgently to find his third son and hurry back to board the ark and saw. Walking through the deep jungle, he saw his grandfather Methuselah looking for the fruit in the dark. Methuselah knew that this little girl was his grandson's wife and that Noah had raised her with his own hands. For the past 10 years, the girl had been sheltered by their family, but she had never given him any blessings. To make up for her, he cast a spell to heal the girl's wounds and thus restored her fertility. On the other hand, the warlords assembled all their troops in the middle of the rainstorm, and in a moment, all the warlords poured into the forest and poured out in the direction of the Arkansas. The youngest son also realized that disaster was coming, so he took the little girl back to the forest and prepared to board the Arkansas. On the way, he was attacked by the defense equipment he had planted, and the warlord's army of 100,000 was close at hand. The youngest son did not choose to run for his life but decided to stay behind with the little girl and quietly wait for the judgment of fate. At the critical moment, Noah came to save his son. 
but when he turned back to keep the little girl, it was already too late. Noah decided to abandon the rescue, pulling his son away from the place, while the abandoned little girl became the soul of the warlord's feet. Before the disaster, a battle of life and death will be fought, a brutal war for the survival of humankind. Before the flood of doom, humankind fought to the death with the stone men to board the Ark of Salvation. The megaliths lined up with wooden sticks to build an impenetrable defense line for the Ark behind them. The human army swarmed up to fight the megaliths head on to try to break through the defense line, but each time the megaliths swung their attacks, they were able to hit a large number of humans. In front of the absolute power of humans simply cannot be beaten as the number of humans continues to increase from the rear. The advance of human combat capabilities gradually improves and begins to turn the situation. As both sides struggled to kill, the warlord leader took advantage of the confusion to pierce the heart of the megaliths with a gun, and the megaliths were pushed to the ground as they struggled to stay on their feet. With the first megaliths fell, human morale instantly increased, and they began to surround and struggle to dismantle the stone man's body. And at that moment, the sky suddenly released a bright light on the megaliths. Once punished by the megaliths at this moment, they have understood that they have been forgiven by the Creator. When the heart was pried open, there was an explosion and the stone man broke free of his stone body and returned to the heavenly realm as holy light. The rest of the stone people saw that their companions were forgiven by the Creator, so they immediately became more energetic to fight against humans and guard the Ark together until they fought until the last moment when they could turn into angels and return to the Kingdom of Heaven. With the death of another megalith, the defensive line was finally breached by the humans, and one by one, the humans broke through the defensive line and headed for the Ark and saw. Despite constant interceptions from the rear, some evil people eventually boarded the Ark and saw. Seeing that the other side was about to break into the Ark's gate, Noah, guarding at the end, immediately cut the climbing rope to protect the last line of defense. The leading warlord took advantage of the confusion and looked at a side ladder to break in quietly while the megaliths, still fighting on the front line, gradually began to die and return to the sky. The defensive line built by the megaliths was completely breached and thousands of soldiers rushed towards the Ark gate as fast as a tide. Noah urgently let his eldest son enter the Ark to protect his family while he stayed outside to close the gate and fight with the remaining megaliths until the last moment. One of the megaliths stationed at the end saw that it was about to fall, so he said goodbye to Noah with regret and tore his body apart to block the last wave of attack for Noah. He also received the Creator's forgiveness as a genie returned to the heavenly realm and at that moment the earth suddenly began to burst. A column of water from the cracks gushed out to knock back all the soldiers sprinting in front of them. Immediately after the 100 meter height tsunami swept in, the army led by the warlord was flooded and Noah grabbed the rope at the last moment to escape from danger. The flooded people struggled under the water for a moment before being sunk under the water, and in a moment, all the land was turned into an ocean, except for this boat which carried all the species. Noah's Ark is floating on the surface of the water. At this point, the wailing outside the boat was horrifying, and the kind-hearted child pleaded with his father to throw down the rope to save the rest of the people. But Noah still believed that the Creator had sent the natural disaster. After the flood, the human race will be completely extinct, the Creator will re-establish order, and the family will not be able to reproduce and will have to die one by one for their elders until the last son dies. At this moment, they are completely unaware that at the moment of the Ark's departure, the tyrant Cain sneaked into the Ark and hid in the bottom of the cabin. And all this happened to be discovered by the second son who arrived. But he did not stop the tyrant but quietly provided food to him, and he did so all because his father did not help him save the little girl although resentful of his father, he still dared not hurt his father. And the tyrant seized his wavering psychology to compel him, telling him that the real brutal man was his father. The ship is full of beasts but ignores humans and even compels him to join forces to get rid of his father. Meanwhile, another incredible piece of news suddenly shatters Noah's entire plan. Grandfather Methuselah gave his granddaughter-in-law, who had lost her fertility, a miraculous pregnancy, which meant that the family line could finally continue to be passed on as well. She and her husband told their father about the happy news 
But Noah was suddenly furious when he learned that the whole human race, which he had painfully killed at the will of the Creator, had been destroyed by his own family, which meant that everything he had done would be lost. He rushed to the top of the ark in anger and knelt to pray for the Creator's forgiveness because next, he had to make a very difficult decision, that is, he had to kill the child and his daughter-in-law with her own hands. Just then, the rain suddenly stopped, and the dark clouds that covered the sky slowly dispersed, which made Noah even more sure that the next decision was approved by the Creator. He told his family his plan that if a boy were born, he would be the last human, and if a girl were born, he would kill her with his own hands at the moment of birth. In short, the Creator's will must be obeyed, and humankind cannot reproduce. Later, as the eldest son, who was about to become a father, could not accept such an ending, his daughter-in-law was in tears and was struck by a bolt from the blue, and his mother quietly released it off to look for land. Once she found land, he would secretly help her daughter-in-law escape from there, and the next day the pigeon flew back without even dirt under its feet. The world outside was already dead. Unwilling to give up, the mother asked her youngest son to wake up the two doves again and continue her search for the land. Seeing her daughter-in-law's delivery date approaching, the mother finds Noah and pleads in a hoarse voice to spare the innocent child in her womb. If she must be punished, it is she who should be punished because it was she who secretly prayed to his grandfather Methuselah to restore her daughter-in-law's fertility. But Noah was so determined to do the will of the Creator that his angry wife broke with him and cursed him on the spot. Before finding land, the mother decided to send them away quietly in a small boat, even if they floated on the sea rather than stay here and wait for the cruel trial. But at the moment when the two mothers and sons are about to say goodbye, or Noah finds out, he decisively drops the fire and burns the boat. But just then, his daughter-in-law is about to give birth at this time. At the same time, the second son and the tyrant section has been quietly launched. They killed part of the cabin animals and then let the second son notify Noah to come to the bottom to investigate. When he put all his attention in front of the animals, the tyrant took the opportunity to launch a surprise attack on him from behind, and the two fought on the ground. Meanwhile, the daughter-in-law's side is still struggling, and this side of the two sides is in a sustained struggle. Noah was unfortunately subdued by the tyrant. Just as the tyrant was about to kill Noah, the second son suddenly came out from behind and stabbed the tyrant, and he finally chose to stand by his father's side. The daughter-in-law finally gave birth to a little girl after severe pain, but the pain in her belly did not stop there, and only after a careful observation was it found that there was a little girl in her stomach which means that Noah killed two little lives at the same time. After finishing the tyrant, Noah immediately returned to the upper level to look for the child, and his wife stopped him halfway, hoping he would leave the child alone. In the face of his wife's pleading, Noah still insisted on his position and completed his final task in obedience to the will of the Creator. The daughter-in-law had no choice but to plead with him to stop the child from crying before doing anything. She did not want to see her child die crying, and this request seemed to have pride Noah's heart. Before Noah did it, the daughter-in-law sang a nursery rhyme while crying to stabilize the child. At this time, his wife also trembled and climbed to the top floor to witness this cruel scene. After the children had completely fallen asleep, Noah decided to pull up the dagger and aim at the children, but he hesitated to do so. Finally, Noah was awakened by the love in the hearts of two children. At this moment, he would rather go against the will of the Creator, but cannot kill their granddaughters with their own hands, and at that moment, the dove looking for land picked up a leaf and returned to the Arkansas. At the end of the story, they found the last piece of land in the previous days, and human reproduction finally continued. Perhaps the Noah family has passed the test of the Creator's natural disaster, where evil sinks downward and good rises upward. That was all of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.